There are a lot of different tools out there for hacking Wi-Fi, and it can be difficult to know what are the best ones. Today, we're going to go right to the source and ask the hackers at the Layer 1 conference what their favorite tools are and why. So let's check it out. My favorite Wi-Fi hacking tool. Right now, it's the Aircrack Suite, though I am, uh, I've been playing with um, BetterCap. Uh, I am not as proficient with BetterCap as I am with the Aircrack Suite, but that's just a matter of time. Favorite Wi-Fi hacking tool is by far Hashcat. Not only specifically for Wi-Fi hacking, but it's a really good decryption tool and it's efficient and it's pretty easy to use. My favorite is Bully because assuming that a router or access point is vulnerable to a pixie dust attack, then you can get inside it within like 10 seconds. I would also pick Aircrack NG, the entire suite, uh, to be able to do some cracking and capturing uh, and uh, format conversion and decryption and, and graphing and, and all those types of things. Uh, but arguably my go-to is Kismet of both varieties uh, because Wi-Fi hacking is largely about capturing data and then doing some analysis of that. The first Wi-Fi hacking tool that most hackers learn is Aircrack NG because it works across the most common and widespread flaws in modern Wi-Fi networks. This flaw depends on a few conditions to work. First, we need a client device like a cell phone or a laptop connected to a Wi-Fi network. Then, with the right wireless network adapter, we can kick the client off the network and when they reconnect, listen in on the handshake they exchange. Once we capture this handshake, we can use the computer to quickly guess every likely password, allowing us to test potentially millions of passwords. While this might seem complicated, even a beginner can learn Wi-Fi hacking with Aircrack NG by practicing with a round of the Chicken Man game. The Chicken Man Wi-Fi hacking game is an easy to use CTF game using low cost $3 microcontrollers. Using these, we create two Wi-Fi networks and let hackers hack away and try to get the most number of points within a 10 minute period. In order to do this, they'll use Raspberry Pi computers using Kali Linux, and they'll try to basically crack the password using any of the tools that are available on Kali. The Chicken Man game is designed to be so simple that even someone who has never hacked Wi-Fi before can play it in a matter of minutes. Now to get started, you first need to identify the name of your network card, and then put it into monitor mode so you can start scanning for the channel that the access point you're attacking is on. Once you identify the channel that the network is on, you'll need to restart AeroDump NG, and this time save the packets until you identify a handshake, which is basically somebody connecting to the network and allowing you to get a hash version of the password. Now next, we'll take a program called Aircrack NG, which will take a big list of password guesses and run them through the computer's processor really quickly until we get the correct answer, provided it exists somewhere on our giant password list of guesses. Once we have the correct answer, we'll go ahead and log into the wireless network and navigate to a handy web interface where we have a series of buttons where whichever team can press the button and begin earning points while getting a little light show. At the end of 10 minutes, whoever has the most points wins. While Aircrack has its own cracking suite, you may not have time to wait for your hash to crack. Another tool called Hashcat can speed things up with hardware once you capture the WPA handshake. Hashcat can crack nearly any type of hash that's out there, supporting a stunning array of hash types. It's famous for being able to use GPU and CPU power to attack WPA handshakes with brute force, cracking them in a fraction of the time that Aircrack can manage by itself. But what if no one's home and the router's just there all by itself? BetterCat makes it possible to go after networks that Aircrack and Hashcat can't breaking the rule that a device must be connected to a network before you can capture a handshake. Just one of BetterCap's abilities is to grab a hash that can be cracked in places where no one's home, as well as a full suite of tools to attack the network from inside. Wi-Fi Protected Setup, or WPS, is a protocol that hackers have been exploiting since 2011. The original attack, Reaver, could brute force the WPS setup pin on the back of most routers in a matter of hours. The downside was it required you to stay connected to a target network while it tried every possible pin until it succeeds in guessing the correct one. But a new attack called WPS Pixie can get the pin much faster. 
WPS Pixie is an attack adopted by tools like Bully and updated versions of Reaver. If a Wi-Fi network is vulnerable to this attack, WPS Pixie works by sending requests to the router that opens a WPS session. The router will send a reply that the attacker can use to crack the WPS pin instantly. Once the attacker has this pin, they can use the WPS pin like a user who's simply forgotten their password to request the current password from the router. When the router receives the pin, it sends the password to the attacker. Tools like AirGetIn have streamlined this into a nearly completely automated attack. This makes vulnerable routers easy prey. Once they obtain the pin, it doesn't matter if you change the password, they'll always have access. If you can't break into a network, there's still a lot you can learn from analyzing packets with tools like Kismet, no password required. Kismet can show information like when a user is home or not, which device they are currently connected to and using, and what types of Wi-Fi devices are inside a location. All of this makes it a hacker's ideal tool for wireless spying. Because Wi-Fi has a line of sight range, an attacker with a directional Wi-Fi antenna can spy on behavior from up to a mile away. Kismet is essentially a Wi-Fi signals intelligence tool that can provide a hacker with valuable information about you and your Wi-Fi usage habits. If you want to know more than what Kismet can show you and you don't have the Wi-Fi password, tricking the victim into connecting to a rogue access point is the way to go. The Hack5 Wi-Fi Pineapple is an integrated Wi-Fi attack suite that allows for the easy creation of rogue access points. Using its web application interface, you can scan for nearby clients, target individual ones, and deploy a number of attack modules. After plugging one in and flashing a firmware image, the Pineapple can sniff for the names of networks that nearby devices are searching for. You can also specify the names of fake networks that you want to create manually. Once the Pineapple builds a list of network names that nearby devices are probing for, it will automatically create fake clones of these Wi-Fi networks to trick victims into connecting. Connecting to a rogue AP could allow a hacker to take over your data connection completely. So, how do you defend yourself? These tools and their associated attacks may seem pretty scary and advanced, but you may be surprised to learn that the best defenses against them are usually fairly simple and common sense. Uh, probably the big one is don't use WPS. Set up a guest network and a regular network, and then make the passwords really long. Don't connect to networks that you're not sure of. Like if there's a network that's out and you're not sure if it's the right network, don't connect to it. Because if it's someone trying to impersonate another network, it could end badly. Well, uh, when you leave the house and you don't want your mobile phone to join potentially terrible networks, turn Wi-Fi off. And it is a bit of a challenge in some cases to remember that every time you leave the, you leave the house, you should turn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off so that people can't mess with you. Um, but the safest thing to do is to just turn it off if you don't need it. Pretty much, like, treat it like your front door, you know? I mean, don't, don't let random people you don't know on it. You know. After talking to hackers today about their favorite Wi-Fi hacking tools, it's pretty obvious these can be broken down into three basic categories. Now, the first relies on a weak password in order to break into a network. So if your password is password123, you are probably screwed. The second relies on the WPS setup pin, which some people might think is convenient, but actually might be the worst thing you can do to your network security, because it can let a hacker in in about 15 seconds. You should go into your router and make sure that this is disabled, because there is absolutely no reason for you to be using it, and it actually can really screw you over, even if you have a crazy secure password. So if you follow step one, you should follow step two and make sure that you're not giving away your ultra secure password in 15 seconds to any hacker nearby. Now the third is to make sure that you're not tricked into stupid scenarios that you know you shouldn't be doing, like connecting to some random network. Now that might not seem like something you would do, but if you're trying to get a bunch of work done, suddenly your router stops working, you get frustrated, and you see a network that looks more or less like your router, but it doesn't have a password, that should be a big red flag and not a relief that you're finally going to get some internet and get your work done. 
Instead, you might end up losing all of your data, which is way worse. So if we've learned anything today, it's that you should make sure to take these steps to keep your Wi-Fi safe if you want to expect to keep hackers out of your network. I'm Cody with Redia. If you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, hit me up on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, and we'll see you next time.